can we start sir hello sir sundar hello sir hello ah yes uh, shall we start sir yes yes shall we go ahead ah oh, wait sir i will just uh, give some introduction uh, very good morning everyone and uh, i welcome you all uh, to this uh, national seminar on emerging trends in construction industry and i i welcome our speaker today mr saundara rajan and who is currently working as an uh, assistant general manager and head of engineering avas and i construction private limited chennai and uh, sir has been uh, sir has completed his masters in structural engineering in college of engineering gindi university and uh, sir has started his career in the field of roads civil infrastructure power plant accessory works in design and exhibition and then he moved on to avasandai in the year 2005 and currently responsible for all the company's design and engineering works uh, in india as well as uh, in abroad like uh, malaysia and uh, singapore regions and uh, sir has associated with many key projects overseas such as uh, jimma power plant qatar science and technology park new doha international airport dubai tower qatar uh, national museum uh, and also he has associated with uh, many key projects in india as well like uh, dubai uh, dubai abani international convention center uh, mumbai mumbai international airport marathon future x atmosphere sky bridge uh san infra in it building etc and uh, sir has published many technical papers and presented over 20 uh, papers in the conferences both national and international and sir has completed I mean, sir has successfully uh, handled 4 lakh metric tons of structural steel and uh, sir has specialized in complex uh, erection engineering and practical design concepts so without further delay i would like to uh, I request uh, Mr. Sounder Rajan sir to commence the session. Sir, over to you, sir. Yes, thank you, Vijay. Thank you, uh, uh, the coordinators uh, and uh, the professors. Good morning to all. So today, uh, this particular one hour, one and a half hours, uh, we are going to see about uh, the latest uh, erection technologies, whatever involved in terms of complex projects. It is. Uh, normally uh, if you see a regular buildings does not require any uh, innovative methods but any complex projects need a complex and thinking methodology so before going on to the topic i will give a brief about the company so as ever since i it is uh, uh, now uh, around the 38 years of experience am i audible Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, Evasanda is founded in nineteen eighty four, and uh, we have been there in sixteen countries: Singapore, Thailand, Dubai, Philippines, and in India, we have been from two thousand nine onwards. So, what we do? We normally do construction, construction of structural steel, structural composite, multi-story buildings. and in terms of uh, energy oil and gas plant construction and renewable energy we do so i will just play a small video
So thanks for patiently watching the video. Now we will go on to the topic. So here you can see there are some construction destructions happened, which happened in Chennai. This happened a few years back. And this is again a construction mishap which happened in Kolkata. So the common in the both the strategies are they collapsed during the construction stage itself. That means it has not reached even the design values. So when we when we all as a designers uh, we know that the proportion of the self fight to the live load or to the superimposed dead load, the superimposed dead load and live load is very huge when compared to the self fight. So that means how a structure can fail when it is not even experienced the its design load. So that is what the topic today we are going to see. So by in preliminary, we have to understand about uh, the realities. So this is what uh, majorly in terms of uh, in our curriculum, we are normally or sometimes miss uh, going into practical. We always see about uh, how textbooks talks about. So for example, if there is a roller support, these type of roller support cannot be achieved in a normal cast in situ concrete. It can be achieved either in a precast beam or in a steel beam. So similarly, pinned support, fixed support. So fixed support, wherever we go for a cast in concrete, there we can have a fixed support. When there is a cast in concrete, that means when there is a development bar between the beams and the concrete, then we cannot have a pinned or roller support. Also, we always uh, talk about a simply supported beam with a point load. So where it comes, so when there is a beam and there is a column comes, it is there. So a distributor load, we always talk about UDL and uh, universally uh, uniformly varying load. So we have to always while in the curriculum itself, while we study itself, we have to relate everything to the practical. So that's where we have to start from. So erection engineering is a process of working out simple, safe and economical way of erecting steel structure. The challenging part is to satisfy the stability, strength and serviceability criteria. So what are the things we have to think, take into point is the codal requirements tolerances during fabrication, tolerances during erection, locked in forces, safety margins. So uh, instead of uh, giving it in a theory, I'm just giving it here a very simple way. So this is a portal frame fixed at both ends and it is having a beam and two columns. Say column is of uh, height of three meters and the beam is of 15 meters. This is analyzed perfectly for the given load. It is analyzed perfectly and it is doing good enough. On the right side, you can see the free body diagram. Yes, it is good enough. But what will happen during the construction stage? Say, for example, the top beam, it cannot be transported as 15 meter piece. It has to be spliced into two. That is a 12 meter piece and a three meter. Since the transportation limit of any uh, fabricated material on road is 12 meter by 2.5 meter by 3 meter. So that is what the limitation we have. So that means the beam has to be spliced. Then while the beam, once the beam is, before the beam is getting erected, the column if you take, the column currently it is the top is fixed and the bottom is fixed. But during erection what will be happening? The bottom is fixed and the top will be free. That means it will be experiencing a two time 2L, the buckling uh, while we consider the effective uh, length, it is 2L. It is not 0.7L or 0.8L when we consider both end as fixed. So the column is going to behave as one end fixed and other end free. And the beam, if you take the beam, what we have seen and designed is both the end it is having support, but it is 
when it is getting lifted it is lifted at a center point the bending moment changes and the shear force diagram changed so erection engineering is nothing but considering how it is going to be erected based on that we have to recalculate redesign the entire structure whether it is withstanding the practical conditions and the practical loads while it is getting erected so in terms of uh, identification of the errors when we found the error and correct it in the concept design stage then the concept then the cost of correcting is low but during the construction period when there is any identification happened then the cost is very high fine so now the innovative erection methodology is driven by the constant challenges whenever we have a challenge we used to find a innovative methodology so what are the challenges uh, uh, we are having currently so the first one is the detailed design challenges engineering challenges and fabrication challenges so in terms of detailed design challenges we have majorly four categories the first one is geometry and the setting out challenges what is it all about say for example this is a building in riyadh this is nothing but a mask but the shape is highly irregular and it requires highly defined geometry and highly precise fabrication and erection so this is what the structure fabricated uh, and erected one is all about so this is another famous structure statue of uh, unity uh, which we have constructed two years back so again this is geometrically uh, it is completely uh, complex since there is nothing symmetrical and uh, in terms of plan wise also nothing is symmetrical and everything uh, different then the next uh, one in terms of detailed design challenges is the connection challenge how to connect two different elements for example on the left side you are seeing a member application model where it is this is what as per the design it will be there but when we have to practically connect the main member is strengthened and the width has been increased and the complex junction has to be moved away so those type of complexity is there so this is another structure where uh, there is a bearing has to be done you can see there is a bearing uh, introduced at the bottom so this is another uh, normal challenge what we face in terms of connection the beams and the connecting beam supported beams and the supporting beams will not be getting connected concentrically that means there will be a lot of eccentricity will be there if you take the left side beam it is not connecting to the center of the beam so similarly on to the right also you can see the members are connecting eccentrically so this is another bearing connection where the there is an another member which is getting connected inside the member so there is a member puncturing in puncturing inside the member so what we will be normally doing for this type of thing is we will be going ahead with the fine element modeling so this is a uh, few types of uh, modeling which we have done for uh, statue of unity so what we will be doing is we will be completely doing a, a fine element model and we will be uh, verifying it whether it is uh, within the permissible since in terms of uh, uh, you might have uh, designed connections safe in plate connections the end plate the base plate you might have designed but these type of uh, complex connections will not come in any theory we have to work from the basics so the next one is a pre camber uh, before uh, on to this topic i will just explain what is pre camber normally we talk about any beam getting deflected say if a beam is uh, getting deflected for about 50 mm and the as per the code the deflection limit is say 25 mm so what is that normally structural engineer will do is the structural engineer will ask for a pre camber that means 
we have to fabricate or construct the structure in a negative mode say it will be projecting up by 25 mm it will be in terms of curve it will be projecting up by 25 mm that means once it deflect it will deflect by 50 mm but from the zero point it will deflect 25 mm so that means we are satisfying the code by means of strength it is already satisfied it is only a serviceability criteria so serviceability criteria if it is not getting uh, satisfied the one way of without having any impact in terms of uh, material what we can do is doing a precamber where we will be using these precambers is when the span is very large whatever you are seeing is about uh, 700 meter uh, dia dome so these type of domes require precamber so you can see at the bottom this is another uh, metro station uh, in uh, saudi arabia so during the erection itself the pre it will be constructed in the upper curvature the next type of challenge is the interface normally while during the design we will be doing the design without any interfaces but when we do a detailed engineering that means coordinating with all other vendors say for example when there is a structure is there what are the other things can come mechanical so mechanical electrical plumbing there is can be an ac deck can come there can be down water pipes uh, then there are facades are there uh, then facade support and structures all these things can, can come say for example here this is a airport structure where uh, the down water pipes has to be taken inside the column so we have to open the column that means we have to redesign for all these elements wherever we are disturbing the original design then the other type of uh, coordination is in terms of different structural elements say when there is a core wall is there and there is a structural steel running inside the structural steel and the rebar has to be coordinated and based on that if there is a coupler requirement is there we have to provide coupler requirement or the coupler cannot be provided there has to be some openings and foremost the thing is everything has to be coordinated with the as built it cannot be theoretically cannot be done just with the engineering so theoretical for by means of as builds we have to coordinate and we have to do you can see on the left top corner you can see the steel inside the two steel plates you can see the rebars coming out so all these things has to be coordinated unless otherwise we cannot erect so this is another type of coordination on the left most you can see a bare steel structure you can see two cylinders which is the concrete portion then surrounding all on the left side is the steel structure so from here on the right if you see there are many elements of facade supporting structure the zoomed out is the right um, right most one whatever you are seeing in terms of yellow and green are the supporting structure so that means this is not as part of the main design but to support the cladding that is the third image to support the cladding all these things will be there say on the third image also you can see how the elements of the facade has been divided so every color denotes each and every uh, panel so all these things has to be coordinated and the joints has to be coordinated everything has to be coordinated then the other one is uh, on the deck whatever we are placing over the steel beams say over the steel beams we are placing over the decks so when the decks is spanning perpendicular uh, to the beam then the coordination is much simpler but if it is not spanning if it is spanning at an angle that means that there is a curvature is there or there is a the supporting beam itself is uh, inclined then the coordination 
is highly difficult. So these are the challenges which we face during the detailed design. So the next type of uh, challenges uh, what we face is in terms of fabrication. So the first challenge in terms of fabrication is a multi-member node fabrication. So this is one of my favorite project, which is in Qatar. Okay, this is Qatar National Museum. This has been uh, uh, driven directly by the King of Qatar and the princess was the project manager of this. This has been awarded to an, another contractor and they have, they could not done. So it has been given to us. So this is the closer view of the structure. It is highly complex. In terms of uh, architect, what it denotes is the desert rose. There are desert roses available there in Qatar. Still it is available. So those type of uh, desert roses are, uh, resemble this shape. So it is a highly complex. You can see this is the view. There are vertical discs are there and there are roof disc and every roof disc is not there in a proper plane. So these type of structures, what it will happen is these type of connections will come. Okay. There are about 27 to 45 members will come and connect at a single node. So which means that it has to be the node itself has to be differentiated and a precise fabrication has to be done. The next one is on the fabrication of the disc segment. So in terms of uh, similar to this uh, one, the disc has been segmented and the multiplanar disc has to be fabricated. This is another uh, fabrication of the disc. So next, apart from this multidimensional is the 3D dimensional, it is not in a single diamond, single curve. There are th three dimensional curves. Say whenever there is a two dimensional curve, it can be rolled. But when there is a three dimensional curve and the curvature is also less, then it has to be segmented into pieces. On the left top, you can see there are horizontal lines on the blue color, light blue member which denotes that it has to be segmentally welded together to form this particular double curvature. So that is what in the right uh, photo you can see. So this is a YAS canopy, it's a, the, just a front, front entrance canopy. Here also it is a double curvature. Here also you can see it is has been segmented, partially rolled, then it is segmented then it is welded to make this particular multi-planar, multi-curvature member. The next challenge is uh, ensuring the geometrical fit up. Yes, we fabricate, but what is the uh, confirmation that it will fit in the site? At the site, we don't have a comfortable place. That means uh, we work under sun, which is about uh, around 50 degrees Celsius, it will come. But in the fabrication factory, where it is in the controlled environment, so that means that in the fabrication factory itself, it has to be, fitness has to be verified. So this is a curvature curved truss of New Doha International Airport, Qatar Airport. So the complete um, structure has been trial assembly has been made in the factory. You can see uh, the engineers who are standing. So based on the engineers, you can scale down the structure height and structure length. So this is also again uh, in New Doha International Airport. So this is an another curved arch. This is uh, pertaining to the main terminal building where the front uh, uh, entrance would be there. So this is a typical uh, assembly will be there. So this is also pre-assembly has been made. So this is a trial assembly of uh, Qatar National Museum, the previously whatever you have seen. 
So this is also assembled in the factory before it is dispatched to the site. So this is another uh, deep girders which is uh, pertaining to a power plant. This also has been made in a tile assembly. So previously I have shown this one where uh, there are pipes, the downwater pipes has been taken inside. So this is a canopy roof structure. So there also the pre-assembly structure has to be done. Apart from that, incorporating other trader works. So as we have seen, the downwater pipe has to be coordinated. It has to be done. So these are facade supporting elements and deck supporting angles has to be fixed. And you can see there are rebars on the wing plate, whatever has been welded. You can see the rebars and the rebar is having couplers. That means this particular assembly is uh, partially going into the concrete and there are rebars which is already there and the rebar continuity has to be maintained by means of these couplers. This is again uh, in terms of uh, facade, facade supporting structure requires all these wind plates has to be welded along with the main structural steel. Then the next is AESS. AESS means architecturally exposed steel structure. Normally, uh, most of the time, uh, steel structure will be covered either by cladding or by uh, uh, cementitious boards, it will be there. But uh, nowadays, uh, people want to see steel structure. Previously, people uh, have a phobia that a steel structure means it is an industrial building. But now, it is uh, there used in a resident, residential building, commercial building, office space, everywhere. Structural steel has been used. Moreover, <coughs> there is a scarcity to uh, for the construction material in terms of sand is not available, uh, bricks are costlier, cement is highly costlier. So whenever they are looking for the alternative material, structural steel comes into picture. So structural steel can be reused and the value of the structure is almost 50% when you demolish the structure. So that means the structural steel is highly uh, now developing. So in terms of architecturally exposed, what it has to be done is first it has to be properly blasted. That means uh, shot blasting or sand blasting has to be done. Then when it, once it is done and a proper painting or a finishing coat has to be given and it has to be dispatched. So next we are coming on to the engineering challenges. So the first engineering challenge is shape and size. So as usual, normally architects will try their best to make sure the structural engineer goes to the head. So that is what the normal formula. So on the left, you can see Burj Khalifa which is the world tallest tower currently. And on the right, it is a Saudi Arabian uh, structure, Kingdom Trade Center. It is having a jewel. The, there is a connecting bridge which has to be constructed at the top. When we have to construct anything at the top, what we have to do is, we have to take a crane or a lifting element above that particular structure then only we can lift that is what the formula is all about but the two buildings whatever you are seeing on the screen has been the last piece the topmost piece has been erected well before say on the left side the top spire which is the circular element has been erected 200 meters below and it has been pushed up telescopically to the top while we are constructing the other surface it has been pushed up similarly on to the right the kingdom trade center the top jewel has been erected at the bottom then it has been moved progressively while we are moving the additional elements has been added into that 
so this is uh, stadium in qatar khalifa olympic stadium so the lightning arch this is a, again a multi dimensional curvature so this shape is highly complex so these are other structures which we have recently we have done the far top one is nas arena uh, dubai and uh, the next one is uh, saudi arabian metro and warner brothers uh, mall then you have the current trending uh, museum of the future so the next part apart from the size and the shape is stability so as i just told in the introduction itself the stability of the structure is highly uh, difficult in terms of uh, during the construction that means uh, we have to take additional care so especially uh, in terms of lateral stability we have to uh, take utmost care so in terms of stability what we will be normally doing is either we will be doing a arrester frame that means it should not move away uh, laterally if it is a normal single column on to the right bottom corner you can see the columns are supported laterally by means of guy ropes guy wires are used but when it is a trusses as in terms of the left top it has to be arrested by a arrester frame you can see the yellow color marked towers those are the arrester frames this will arrest the tower from moving laterally so this is uh, excessive deflection so as i told uh, these are the precamber issues and uh, during the erection when there is uh, one side is fixed another side is uh, yeah pinned then horizontally it will tend to push and the curvature will try to become flat that means there has to be a uh, analytical curvature has to be varied from the original curvature and it has to be fabricated like that so that means once it is fabricated and brought to its position then it will take the actual position so as initially i told uh, here is the tabulation for that what are the different loadings or uh, during the erection stage sulfate of uh, all different elements uh, will be there in during the different stages say for example only column will be there only beam will be there but in the finish stage the complete load will be there in the erection stage there will be construction load where there is a construction equipments can be there or the uh, personnel who are working on it which is 1 kilo newton where is the superimposed dive load and the live load will be there which put together around 10 kilo newton per meter square will be there whereas in construction it will be just 1 or 1.5 so here the wind loads probably we will be reducing we will not be working with the wind load of uh, 45 meter per second 45 meter per second is what uh, 100 100 years the return period but uh, wind loads uh, during the construction stage will be calculated based on the meteorological data which is has been forecasted based on that the wind load will be taken so uh, in terms of stability you can see this is gate district tower there are three towers over with there is a top hat structure is there these top hat structures has to be strand jagged from the bottom so while we it has been strand jagged the connecting member for example when you take my first picture uh, in terms of my uh, basic explanation you assume that it is a portal frame that there are columns are the three columns then you have a top uh, beam so similarly when it is designed these towers are designed the lateral loading of while designing the tower it has been taken into account that this will be connected at the top and based on that the controlled 
deflection is assumed but during the construction stage what will happen is the columns are the towers has been erected uh, independently similar to a column now it is similar to 2l now it is not uh, 0.8l it is 2l so that means it will deflect a lot so this deflection has to be controlled and based on that the asbills has to be taken and it has to be erected the next one is on the crane locations so cranes are normally we use for the erections we use cranes so cranes has to be positioned at the required locations it can uh, it has to be optimal we cannot uh, overdo it so whatever you are seeing is dubai mall the world's uh, biggest mall this is my first project uh, which i have started in 2005 so these are uh, some of the pictures of dubai mall so the next one is on the site access normally any site for example if i have uh, yeah 2400 square feet land how much building uh, size of the building i want to build this i want 2400 square feet building in a 2400 square feet land i want to build a 2400 square feet uh, building that means there is no space for the construction equipment or the construction people to be there so it is a highly difficult one so we have to precisely plan how we have to make during the initial stage uh, the purpose uh, especially when there is excavation happening all over and there are sequential of uh, how to move the equipments how the construction equipments are getting uh, loaded in loaded out so all those things has to be clearly has to be studied then apart from top of uh, everything the thing is the cost and the schedule everything has to be done with a precise uh, schedule you cannot uh, overdo any cost so these are the driving elements so few simple methods of uh, erection we will see so this is uh, a structure which is there in telangana hyderabad this is a government building this government building is uh, cantilevered in all four sides uh, one side is uh, say 60 meter another side is 45 meter and uh, in terms of uh, the other two end it is 15 meter each so this the type of method uh, what we have used for this one is the temporary tower method so the structure is completely assembled over the temporary structure then it is sequentially it is deep prop so this is the original picture of uh, how the structure is erected and after deep propping the structure will take its original position so this is temporary tower method so the same method is also used in terms of large in terms of uh, large span structures temporary tower method will be used so the next type of uh, innovative method is a scaffolding method scaffolding method is similar to uh, temporary tower method but this will be used where you have various type of other components other vendors also working in parallel the major disadvantage is you will not have a bottom free space but there are parallel workings which will be undergoing the next type of method is strand jacking so strand jacking can be yes this is one example of strand jacking which we have done in uh, 2005 the structure is in kolkata the structure is called uh, uh, atmosphere sky bridge this is done by forum group the same forum group which is there with the vijaya forum mall so the same forum group they are, they have their headquarters at kolkata they are a kolkata based firm so this is their building in this one it is a 32 story building on the left at the uh, right so totally it is 64 families uh, in this particular building and this particular uh, bridge is having all the facilities from spa swimming pool golf court uh, hotel everything and it is a private one it is not for public 
it is only for those 64 families so for the construction of the completely the construction has been the middle segment has been erected at the bottom and it has been lifted at the top so this is how it is lifted the lifted weight is around 800 tons so this is what the base bare steel once the skeleton has been lifted then over that it can be built so in terms of strand jacking there are few technical elements is there one is called cat head which will uh, carry the strands so these are the cat heads so this is another uh, beautiful project this is called uh, ski dome so when you visit uh, dubai this is a very beautiful one where uh, it will be completely filled with uh, snow in dubai and you can do uh, your skatings so this is a 3500 tons of uh, bridge which has been completely assembled at the ground and it has been lifted so these are the various elements so in terms of strand jack it is a bottom anchor will be there and the top anchor will be there once the top anchor uh, will be pulled it is like uh, how we take uh, water from well okay you have you are using two hands one hand will pull and another hand will hold then another hand will go down and another hand will pull so that is a very simple technique of strand jacking so that is how it will be pulled so uh, there are not only a vertical strand jacking also there will be a horizontal strand jacking will be there when you have access only at one side you have to lift and you have to horizontally pull it to the right so this has been assembled at the ground and it has been lifted then it has to be horizontally it has to be moved inside then the other type of uh, strand jacking is a tilting method so it is not only lifting or horizontal moving it has to be assembled at the ground and it has to be rotated to its position 1750 tons of this arch has to be rotated to a 112 degrees so this is what uh, the tilting procedure so there is a standalone tower is there so from the standalone tower the strand jacking elements have been pushed and progressively the lightning arch has been erected so this type of technology also will be used in terms of power plants where there is a long cylinders of uh, say 60 meter 150 meter so those type of things also will be uh, done by means of strand jacking and tilting. So this is how it will be erected. So similar to that, uh, there are bridges. Then the other type of method is temporary bridge method. So before erecting a heavy structure at the top, there can be a smaller structure instead of having temporary towers the first method or the second method of uh, uh, scaffolding what we can do is we can assemble a simple structure at the top which will act as a support for the element why we need that support is the top bridge whatever you are seeing has to be has been erected segmentically segmentally like uh, 15 meters has been segmented into 12 and 3 this has been divided into every 12 meters. The next one is launching method. So this type of launching method will be used in terms of bridges, uh, road over bridges or uh, river over bridges where we cannot go and access inside. We cannot have, take support from that. What we will be doing is a, is a nosing we will be doing which is uh, on the right side uh, you can see a gray color member uh, this gray color member is a nose it's a sacrificial member this will take this particular uh, bridge to its position 
and that will be having a upward precamber so that the deflection will be controlled so that is how without accessing at the center it will be erecting erected at the one side and it will be moved inside it is not only just moved uh, on the one end there is a sliding along the curve for example this is again dubai mall which is done in 2007 so the middle canopies so all these canopies have been positioned at one particular place and the, along with the curved rail it has been moved into position since as i told there are difficulties in terms of crane access in terms of handling we cannot uh, go anywhere since the structure is highly clumsy everywhere there are structures are there so from one end it is uh, assume fixed assembled and it has been pushed to its position so this is another view of that from the bottom so you can see the curved rail beams so this is how uh, the preparation for the curve pushing is happening fine so now we have uh, seen the innovative techniques one just sample case study we will do a quick one which is uh, will not take more than five minutes the museum of the future which is the latest one which we have completed so i will quickly run through uh, the technologies uh, the client is dubai future foundation and employer's representative is miras architect is killa design structural engineer is birohapur Cost consultant is AECOM, main contract is BAM, Hicks and Hill. Scope of Evers and I is doing connection design, shop drawings, uh, BIM implementation and coordination, erection engineering and study, stage analysis, fabrication drawings, supply, fabrication, painting, fireproofing, composite floor decking and erection of structural steel works. It is put together 5,100 tons of steel. Uh, in terms of brief about the structure, you might be all knowing, but still I'll just give a brief. Primarily, it is an exhibition space. This will exhibit innovative and futuristic concepts, services, and other products. This will also have labs, foods and beaver, beverage outlets, and an auditorium. It is a highly complex structure with a concrete structure from basement up to the ground floor the basement is of about three basements and at the top there is a seven story composite concrete floor slab and the entire structure is a diagrid structure the basic concept of this diagrid is to provide a column free interior space so that means from anywhere you can you will not see any columns uh, in the interiors so predominantly the concrete wall the core wall will first progress and the structure in terms of concrete is completed until the ground floor then you have the bottom most structure getting erected then the wings which is supporting the vertical elements has been will be erected then the cantilever portion where the curvature starts you can see the support elements getting introduced since the cantilever is having a huge uh, deflection so each and every stage whatever i am showing each and every stage there will be analysis will be done how the permanent members are behaving what is the stress ratio and what is the serviceability criteria of that particular one and each and every assembly what is the lifting weight will be analyzed so then the next portion is the roof portion of the bottom one this is again roof portion of the bottom one and the connecting structure of the vertical element so here we have to introduce a, a stronger temporary tower since the floor beams are coming and the weights are heavy so that means uh, the temperature has to be uh, 
good enough to take care of the load also it is uh, sitting over the ground floor that means it is not over just a concrete uh, element it is over a slab so the slab also has to be checked for these loads then progressively uh, the concrete uh, wall is progressing so similarly on to the left also we will be introducing the temporary tower since the cantilever is more so this is the original uh, one so again uh, diagonal structures every every element every uh, joint is it is completely different and it is taking its uh, inward curvature so once it is inward curvature it is almost like a column so we don't have an issue once again the inward curvature it is exceeding its cantilever limit then again we supposed to introduce a tower so the sub, the tower of height of say 55 meter this tower this cannot be stand alone as a single tower so it has been made as a double tower which is connected at the top and bottom so it is at a different level since the other tower which is going to receive that particular element is going to be there at a different level so other end the progress is on so whenever each and every element deflection it is to the certain limit the bottom structure will be erected first and the top structure will be erected later that means this will make a platform for the top structure so it is a progressive cantilever erection and it is now supported and it is getting connected i'll just play a small video on this
Thank you all for uh, listening to my words. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your informative session. And uh, participants, if you have any doubts or queries, you can ask. Or you can post it in post it in the chat box. Participants. So, type, type of, of anti-corrosive uh, coating. Uh, in terms of uh, every structure has uh, every type of uh, yeah, different type of uh, requirements. Normally, any C structure will undergo three types of uh, three coat system painting. One is MIO, which is uh, anti-corrosive one. Then over MIO of uh, 60 to 80 microns, you will be having uh, intermediate coat, which is again uh, 40 to 60 microns. Then after that, you will be having a top coat, which is a finishing coat. So these two are the normal painting system for anti-corrosive painting system. In terms of uh, uh, structural steel composite buildings, what normally we will be doing is we will be using cementitious or vermiculate one, which is like a cement-like material, uh, gypsum-like material, where uh, it will be sprayed. It will be around, uh, say, by varying from 10 mm to uh, 25 mm thickness, cement-like uh, layer will be applied over the uh, beams. In terms of wherever the architecturally exposed structure, like whatever I have shown, you will be having a special uh, paint called intermescent paint. This intermescent paint, what will be happening is, uh, this will be of a similar uh, 50 to 80 microns only. But once the uh, heat, uh, it is getting there, then it will expand. It will expand to from 80 microns to say, uh, one and a half inch, which is about uh, 40 mm, it will increase. So these are the different types of uh, anti-corrosive and uh, fire protective systems for steel. Uh, thank you, sir. And, uh, is there any other questions, participants? Periodical maintenance, sir. Uh, it is based on structure wise, uh, there will be a different type of uh, requirements will be there. For example, I have told one about uh, atmosphere, which uh, uh, the entire structure, the top roof uh, has been stand jacked. In that particular structure, the total structure is uh, sitting over four jacks, four uh, bearings. Every bearing is about uh, 25 tons. Every bearing is about 25 tons, which is placed over the structure and uh, it has been done. So sometimes uh, these type of uh, bearings will go struck. There is a possibility is there in over a period since uh, the design of these particular roof structures are uh, of any structure is 100 years. So that means it has to be removed. So there are jacks and equipments have to be uh, has already positioned under the provision to lift the entire structure. While we are lifting during the construction phase, the weight is uh, very minimal, which is about 1000 tons, around 1000 tons only. But while we are doing for any maintenance purpose, this type of uh, the complete lifting has to be done. For that, the provision has been made. In terms of uh, commercial buildings or residential buildings or uh, uh, any airport structures, normally the paint warranty will be of uh, three to five years so after three to five years wherever there are touch-ups required touch-ups has to be done then for every 15 years once the complete uh, painting has to be made thank you sir participants if you have any other questions you can ask Thank you. Ma. 
I think there is no questions from participants, sir. Uh, yes, thank you so much, sir. Thank you for uh, being here, sharing your knowledge and information with us. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, thank professors. You. Uh, thank you, students. Uh, special thanks to Ruby for uh, uh, coordinating and organizing uh, the seminar. Thanks, uh, everyone. Thank you, sir. Ma'am has some meeting actually. Uh, she fine. left. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Participants, please uh, fill the feedback link which is posted in the chat box.